Hello everyone, in today's video we are going back to 2009 to revisit the best CPU in the world back then, the Extreme Edition Intel Core i7-975. The i7-975 was launched in Q2 2009 as the flagship CPU from Intel on the new enthusiast grade X58 platform on the LGA 1366 socket. This beloved platform would eventually become well known for its value proposition in combination with the Xeon chips. But this is not our goal today. But this 12 year old CPU is rocking a 4 core 8 threaded setup running at 3.3 GHz base and 3.6 boost. This chip used to be the top of the line, best of the best, with the initial MSRP of 1060 bucks, taking into account inflation that would be about 1300. This processor wasn't cheap and not even loved, as many reviewers considered it useless, as the much, much cheaper i7 920 could be easily overclocked to the same speed for a third of its price. Today, it can be found for less than 50 bucks on eBay, which is still a bit pricey, as I got mine in a kit for 73, and that included a motherboard, a cooler, 8 gigs of RAM, and a GTX 275. Now that's a great deal, but goes to show how much a CPU can depreciate in 12 years. The motherboard that I'll be testing this old cham will be the original P60 from ASUS, paired with 12GB of Kingston Hyper X clocked at 1433CL9, and an old Zamatek cooler. The GPU is my Vega 56, and I know you might say it's overkill, but it's needed in order to compare to the 2700X to see how much are we limited by the CPU. No more talking, let's get into the numbers. I'll be comparing this CPU with the i5-2500K, the 3930K and my new 2700X. Yes, I know, I betrayed the blue team. Also, the i7-975 will be run at stock and we'll get to play with it and I'll see it in another video. First off, we start with the Cinebenches. In R15, 534 points in multi-core and, and 105 points in single. In R20, we have 1095 in multi. I know I, I didn't bother to test the single as it would take like half an hour. Lastly, R20 yielded a score of 2790 points, which might seem a lot until we get to see the 15 watt i7 1165G7 that scores close to 4000. That's sad, but it's true. Next up we have the CPU benchmark where we see a decent 1620 points in multi and 311 in single. This is fine. Actually, not bad considering we are running the CPU at stock. Into games we go. All the games tested here were set to Ultra with the exception of Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Rainbow Six Siege. First up, the classics. In CSGO, we average somewhere between 150 and 200 FPS in an online match and a bit more in the in-game benchmark. I say somewhere because MSI Afterburner just would not show stats nor record FPS for some reason. Overall, a very good experience with no stutter and I'll go to far, as far as to say even competitive. Rocky Lake is next, and here we average a cool 186 FPS with 1% lows at 95 and 0.1% lows at 45. This is where I would recommend to cap the game at 60 FPS for a smooth experience, but again, surprisingly very playable. In Rainbow Six Siege, we have the same good story, 183 FPS, with a minimum at 123. This is a perfect, as we are running maxed out settings. Also. A thing to keep of note is the CPU usage that shows it's not really a bottleneck. Great news for the old beast. A more recent game is up now and that is Doom Eternal. I cannot underline how thankful I am for Vulcan, as it's the most optimized engine I know. To prove, we averaged out 148 FPS with all an Ultra Nightmare. Again, the 1% lows were 96 and 0.1% lows were 45.5. That meaning a 60 FPS cap would help. Okay, so for a more CPU intensive game, I chose Dora Rally 2.0. That I know from experience that it can crash even the best of CPUs when pushed to the max. Yet the i7-975 held up and ran superbly. It averaged 78 FPS with 1% lows at 60 and 0.1% lows at 48. This is great, and it means that this game is absolutely playable with the CPU. Shadow of the Tomb Raider managed to bring this CPU to its knees, as it finally showed it's becoming absolute. We saw a 72 FPS average, which is decent, 
which loads in the 40s and you can see the fact the GPU is held back by the fact it says 16% GPU bound which means it had much more to give and it was held back by the CPU to finish up I picked the division in this 2016 game we, hit, we see 86.1 FPS average with just 60% CPU usage and 84% GPU usage this means we are mostly GPU bound and remember we are running at 1080p with a Vega GPU Closing up, we get to see this old flagship held up very nicely to the 12 years of age and still can pack a punch in newer games as Doom Eternal and or Dare to Ride 2.0. It can play competitive titles like Rainbow Siege, Rocket League or CSGO with ease, paired with the right GPU, and best of all, all of this is without even an overclock. Just to say, the more I play with the CPU, the more impressed I became. Initially thought that this would kinda suck in your titles, yet I was pleasantly surprised by the performance of this old flagship could bring to the table. As for the GPU to go with, I would not recommend using a Vega or an 80 class card, more like a 1060 or RX 580, if you can find one, as those would make a great pairing. In conclusion, I'm happy with the results I got, and more happy to recommend it, uh, or its younger brother the i7-920 or even the i7-950. If you think around with it, you can reach the i7-975 speed and more, these are numbers that are nothing to be ashamed of. So that's it for the subscribers, I have to apologize as this video came a long time after the last one, but I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you all for watching and see you in the next one.